Well, hello world, it's Terry Marshall again, coming to you this time from a beautiful outdoor setting in Mission, British Columbia. About a year ago, I was browsing through the internet and I came across uh, a performance by a young English singer-songwriter named Holly Kirby of one of her original compositions called Forever Bound to Fairy Tales. And I have to tell you, it completely captivated me. The music was beautiful, the, the lyric was mature, and the singer was not difficult to look at. And I sent her an email telling her how impressed I was with the song, not really expecting to get a reply, but very graciously she did respond. And that led to uh, a friendship which has now been going on for over a year and culminated in her and her parents coming to visit Vancouver. And I'm very happy to say that she's with us right now, so please meet Holly Kirby. So Holly, you've been here for about five days now. And yeah. what are your first impressions of the country? Um, it's very beautiful. Mm. and a lot bigger than where I come from. <laughs> <laughs> which is, of course, an island, isn't it? Yeah, the Isle of Wight. The Isle of Wight, which is, I think, what did we say, 24 miles across? Yeah. yeah. I could see you would notice the contrast. Yeah. Um, those who know my interviews know that I've got a horribly linear mind, and I always like to go back to the beginning of things. And as far as I was able to, to discern, the beginning of your singing publicly mm. took place in the family kitchen when you were about nine years <laughs> old. Yeah. Did you have any sense at that time that that's what you wanted to do in life, be a singer? Uh, n not at all. Um, I always enjoyed music, but it wasn't something that I wanted to do professionally. Mm. Uh, it was just a hobby that I really enjoyed. And that performance was actually practicing for a school camp Mm. performance a talent show at the end of the week and my friends were dancing and mm. I couldn't dance <laughs> so I was like I want to sing something from Disney mm. but so. that led to th things didn't it that that camp performance didn't mm. weren't you uh, approached by the teacher who said well it was uh, it was my maths teacher mm. who was also my form tutor mm. he um he said oh you should keep singing you've got a really nice voice and mm. I thought oh that's nice mm. you know mm. someone likes it mm. and so I continued yeah. so what 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 finally tipped you in the direction of taking it seriously as a potential career um, I guess just my growing love for music. Mm. Um, one thing that I remember in particular was that my biology tutor gave me a CD of ten songs that he loved, mm -hmm. and uh, one of them was Jeff Buckley's version of Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah, mm -hmm. and um, and I thought, oh, I'd really love to have a go at singing that. And um, I was just learning to play the guitar, um, just as a hobby again, and um, I recorded I recorded my voice and tried to. Mm -hmm play it along, you know, just picking my way through it, and I sent a version of it to him, to mm. my tutor, and he said, oh, that's great, you should keep going, and really it's just people going, oh, you should keep going, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's made me, and also my well, love for Well, it, not least to me saying you should keep going, but <laughs> that's another story. Um, do you know, can you remember how old you were when you first started writing your own songs? Um, 16 or 17, mm -hmm. maybe, um, mainly it was just covers on the guitar, mm -hmm. but then I started wanting to write my own lyrics. Mm -hmm. Can you remember what the first song was that you wrote? Um, well, for a little while there was um, uh, someone online who was sending me lyrics mm -hmm. and I would put it, put them to music. Um, but the first one that I ever wrote... Oh, actually, um, <laughs> I've forgotten about this one. There was a song that I wrote uh, at the time of the school camp mm -hmm. that I sung there as well with my friend, um, and it's called I Wonder. and. Uh, it's quite bad. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that would be the first song that mm. I ever wrote. Mm. Yeah. Uh, well, you've gone off there. As, uh, any, anyone who's explored your website knows that you've got an amazing number of videos and songs out there. But what they may not know is that you do every single bit of yourself. You know, the concept, the, the choosing locations, doing the filming, doing the graphics, writing the words, writing the etc., etc., etc. Is it because you cannot delegate or just because you enjoy every part of the, the process? Um. I don't know really. It's it's just that I have an idea in my mind, and it's easier just to um, for me to do something because mm. I know exactly what I want. Mm -hmm. um, well, not all the time. I don't always know exactly what I want, um, but that's part of being creative. Mm. I think yeah. you sort of work with what you've got. And yeah. Well, I've always had the opinion that the best creative talents like to control as many of the elements as they can. I, I noted your comment that when you were planning to record your first CD, Holly Kirby or Woman You Don't Know, you mm. said, and I'll try and quote you. I had to pick a studio where I'd, be f I'd feel f able to express myself and not be afraid, afraid to say, I think it should go like this. Yeah. I imagine that as a young person, being in charge is sort of a strange concept for you, is it? I, 
I don't know, because I always, um, I know what I like and what I don't like. And I mm. think that's the same with everyone, mm. no matter yeah. you know, what age you are. Um, so yeah, it wasn't really, it wasn't really like I was in charge. It was mm. just whether I could feel free to say, yeah. I don't like that, I don't like this, because mm. it's my responsibility in the end. Yeah. Well, you've right clearly discovered the benefits of collaboration because you said at the end of it, I really valued their opinions, which yeah. is good. I want to talk a little bit about the music itself and the creative process. You said, my music is me, I'm in all of my songs. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that. Um, <laughs> I, s I don't know really, it's just like, well of course whenever I write a lyric or something it's, it's going to have a part of mm. me in it, my interpretation of a situation or um, you know, if it's directly about me, what I feel, and, you know, it's, it's just... You know, you go through life being you. <laughs> it's just the same. You know, writing music, you're going to have you in your songs. Mm -hmm. and you, I think one of the things you, I, I, I picked up at the end of that quote, you said, sometimes we can get so caught up in our own feelings that we think we are alone, and it's such a great feeling when we find out we're not. Mm -hmm. Songwriting is a great comfort, really. It's kind of saying, do you ever feel like this? Yeah, I, I, I think most of us can identify with that. But the other quote that I love of yours, and which I would like you to talk about, you said, music is deeper than thought. Mm. What did you mean by that? Uh, you can explain your thoughts <laughs> and the feelings <laughs> that music gives yeah. to me and to a lot of people. Uh, I don't think you can explain them. Mm. You know, why does a certain sound, you know, or the way a lyric is sung, why does that make you feel a certain way? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's very powerful. Yeah, very emotive. Mm. Yeah. The uh, colleague Kirby once said, I pretty much live in a fantasy world. It's not that I don't know about the real world, it's just that I choose to live elsewhere. Do you still feel like that? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know really. It's, it's, um, it's a difficult one because I don't know. I think you... There's, there's something recently that I found, HDR photography, mm -hmm. um, where all the colours, there's a, I mean, you put lots of different exposure photos together and you make a different picture. And apparently that's the way that a lot of us see things. Mm -hmm. um, like when you take a photo, you say, it, you know, it doesn't capture what's actually there, what mm -hmm. I see. You know, it's just, it looks kind of dull. Um, and I think that's the same with life in general, when you, you kind of add your own element of fantasy mm -hmm. to it. Um, and... Uh, it would be boring if you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're now in university in England. You've just completed your second year of a three-year degree course. How would you say that that experience has changed you in your music, or has it? Uh, I've, I've learned so much. Um, some of my lecturers say that they're just giving us a toolbox, really, mm -hmm. of equipment to use, and we can use it how we like, mm -hmm. and, and that's exactly it. That's how I feel it is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've learned a lot technically, and... Mm -hmm. I'm still, I've still got so much to learn mm. that you never stop really yeah. with music, anything creative. Anything. Well, I'm, I'm going to bring this to an end because I know we have time pressures, but I wanted to ask you about one thing. Those of us who have had the chance to explore your website in depth are hoping that maybe you will develop another one of your latent talents and we'll actually see you, after your award-worthy performance in Mr. Pepperpot, take up acting. <laughs> <laughs> Tell. <laughs> I believe you did your own stunts in that. That. How old were you <laughs> when Mr. Pepperpot was <laughs> shot? Hmm? Uh, very young. <laughs> it was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I thought that the fall off the couch was masterfully done. Isn't Absolutely it? spectacular. Yeah. Holly, it's been, a, a, as you know, a real pleasure to have you come and visit to Canada. Thank you. We hope it's the first of many visits and that you will enjoy what's left of it. Thank mm. you for taking the time Thank out. You for me. Now, can we persuade you in a few moments to sing a song for us? Uh, yes, oh, <laughs> you <good>. can. <laughs> then give us a moment, folks, and we'll be right back with Holly performing one of her numbers and possibly the number that introduced me to her. See you later.
Yes. 